here's my segment for tonight. I just wanted to add a little something into the mix here. Uh, we've been listening to some great music, Canadian artists, a uh, lot of original material, and uh, it's it's really something. But I wanted to add in something of my own here. Um, and I gotta tell you some funny stories that have happened to me over the last week. Um, I'll tell you about this first of all. So if you ever try to unravel jewelry that gets all stuck together, well, that's what I tried to do. I was cleaning up my drawers and I'm not a really huge uh, jewelry person per se, but I tried to unravel this mess. <laughs> this mess right here. And uh, I've been trying and struggling for the last little while to get this so that the pearls are separate from the beautiful necklace that I have. And I can't seem to do that. Usually I can, but this, this is a real mess. Um, so I thought about the illustration um, of sin and how it entangle, tangles our life. Um, you know, instead of having a plain, ordinary life cycle that, you know, can be actually described as shiny and correctly made and, and beautiful, and how it gets messed up with something else that actually appears beautiful. The pearls are beautiful. Um, and how we can just get our lives into such a mess and entangled with things that we shouldn't. And that's really what this signified to me is this is what sin looks like. Sin is like the beautiful necklace that gets entangled with with something that is counterfeit. These aren't real pearls. <laughs> and it entangles us and messes us right up. So this morning, on top of that, I, had, I, I've never done this before, so I, I actually had a good laugh over it myself. But um, I'm a hairstylist, as some of you know, as well as a musician singer. <laughs> and uh, I was curling my hair, or trying to, and I've used this wand a million times. I've never had a problem with it, but I wasn't paying attention. And I was just kind of standing in front of the mirror and I was curling and twiddling. Maybe I thought it was, you know, um, keeping time to the music in my head or whatever it was. But anyways, I ended up, this thing got stuck in my hair. Not just a little, but a lot. And it was on. It was hot and it was on. So I have this in my hair and it's stuck. And I've been very careful that I don't do this again. But I, I, I had it in my hair. And uh, I thought, what am I going to do? I, I, it's, it's completely stuck. And I'm pulling on. I thought, well, I can't pull my hair out <laughs> by the roots. Um, so, And I can't go far because the thing's heavy. So I grabbed the kitchen shears. Okay? And I had a decision to make. <laughs> I thought, do I cut my hair or do I, you know, um, just let it burn and burn it right off? <laughs> so I unplugged it. And I proceeded with <laughs> these <laughs> to cut my hair. Well, it's back in here somewhere, which believe it or not, I'm going to show you the massive amount of hair <laughs> that I cut. That's a lot, okay? That's a lot. And this hair was st <laughs> stuck around that beautiful tool that I have to curl and straighten hair. I cut it out and I thought, oh, this is going to look awful. And my hairstylist is going to kill me. Um, so, but believe it or not, this is, this is ironic. I lifted up my hair and I could hardly see that all this hair was not removed from my head, <laughs> but it was removed from my head. I could, I actually had to lift it up and then I could see the little pieces, but I'm fortunate that I have a lot of hair, so that's okay. But you know what, to someone else that might've freaked them out, but it's only hair to me, um, you know. Hair today gone tomorrow. Okay, that's not funny. I I thought that, you know, it's a good example again of how sin entangles our lives. Just like my styling tool got stuck into my hair and I literally had to cut it out. So the bottom line is I may have to cut, I hope not, I hope, 
<laughs> I hope I don't have to cut one of those, make a choice and cut it out. But I literally had to cut my hair out off of the tool. And that's sometimes what we have to do with sin is we have to cut it out. And um, I thought it's, it's a great scenario. And uh, this scripture verse was very strong in my mind, so I pulled it out. It's in Hebrews 12. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entangles us or ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Well, the moral of this story of what I told you about what I did to myself in the last few weeks of thinking about it is that I'm going to keep my eyes focused on Jesus. And I'm going to keep on looking at him. And, you know, these are material uh, situations here. But when it comes to this, this is what I'm going to do is keep focused on that. Because every time I take my eyes off of Jesus, I get entangled with something I shouldn't. Uh, because we are all born into sin and we all want to sin. And sin looks good and tasty and it looks wonderful and you have to decide for yourself what sin is in your life and that is a personal that is a personal decision we do have the golden book to tell us you know the the commandments that jesus gave us but also we know in our hearts because we are given a conscience but also the holy spirit tells us when we are wrong and when we are sinning and so we have to run away from that lest we get ensnared and into a big mess that's far messier than what i described what happened to me today so the lord bless you as you go on about your evening and uh whenever the time of day you listen to this program the lord bless you real good and just uh, remember these thoughts today that we want to be clear and able to run the race without sin and not entangled with anything that will weigh us down or that we have to cut out. Anyways, God bless you.